Acts 6, 1 to 7. I'll be talking on prayer that works. Acts 6, 1 to 7. Talking on prayer that works. And in those days, Mr. Oshinshado, no, I didn't call you. Just listen to what I want to say. And prepare yourself. You heard what I said? I'm not talking about the crusade. Go and prepare yourself. The cup or the basket that you are presenting before God is very small. Very small. And in those days when the number... You know, you have to come before he with a very big basket. You have to come before him with a very big basket. And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, who we may appoint over this business, that we give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the same pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanon, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them, and the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. O quickly come. Eternal Father, I thank you. Lord, I bless your name. Father, I worship you. So as you lay hands on her, let the fire fall now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the fire fall now. Baptize this one with fire. Baptize this one with fire now. Let her receive power. Let her receive power for the work. Let it be so, for I've done so with thanksgiving. The apostle said, let us give ourselves to prayer and the word. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Prayer that works. Prayer that is not mixed with the word of God cannot work. The word of God and prayer is like a combo. We've gone to an eatery before. They have what they call combos. They put more than one type of meal inside it. Prayer that is mixed with the word of God, prayer that is word-based, uh, they are like Siamese twins, inseparable. For prayer to work, uh, it must be rooted, grounded, and founded, established uh, on the word of God. Let us give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. There is somebody here. God is arranging something for you. 
But it says, don't be like a fowl that uses his leg to scatter. For prayer to work, uh, there are certain things that must be added to it. The apostle said that it must be continually. Men ought to pray and not to faint. Lifting up hands everywhere that are holy. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. For prayer to have effect, for prayer to have power, for prayer to have the desired result, uh, you add the word. Then you add fasting. This type cannot go except by prayer and fasting. Matthew 17, 21. How be it, this kind gets not out, but by prayer and fasting. And what was he talking about? He was talking about defeating the oppression of devils and demons. A man had brought his son to the disciples of Jesus, and they could not deal with the devil. They tried and tried, but there was no the desired result did not comfort. Then they brought the man and the son to Christ, and Christ cast out the devil. Then the disciples asked, Master, why were we not successful? He said, eh, the operation of devils and demons of this type eh, requires prayer that is bagged down with denial. How be it? This type does not go out but by prayer and fasting. For you to get what you are looking for, you must know how to go about it. Prayer, the word, fasting. You know, there are a lot of people who can fast. Maybe you are here this morning. You have been struggling with fasting. Receive strength this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. I said receive strength this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, when you receive a certain grace, the Bible says continue in that grace. Continue in what? And uh, if you know what is good for you, the best time to really build a foundation, a right foundation for your Christian life is when you are still young. So that when you have built the correct foundation for your life, that foundation will carry you through. That foundation will do what? When I was much younger, I used to fast like no man's business. I just wake up and start to fast. Three days, no food, no water. Seven days. They didn't, nobody called fast. Though. God will just call fast for me. Seven days. Twenty something days, no food. Only liquid, thirty something days. Yeah, she used to even fast better than me. She can fast. You just wake up, 21 days, no food. There is power 
in prayer. Paul said to Timothy, if you have given anything to eat, any what? Anything. He said, just bless it and eat it. And give thanks in the place of prayer. And no harm will come to you. First Timothy 4. 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from it, which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. It is sanctified by the word of God and what? Uh-huh. Prayer and the word must go hand in hand. To enjoy prayer, one must have the desired answers expected from prayer. It is therefore imperative to find out how to make time spent praying to be worth the while. Emotive prayers tear up emotions without achieving desired results. Emotive prayers stir up the emotions without achieving the desired result. So I began to pray a prayer over 15 years ago. I needed to know what I need to do to have total victory in life. And I prayed that God should reveal to me my Isaac offering. That's what I called it. In Genesis 22, God told Abraham to offer Isaac. I prayed that prayer for years. Then I went to California, end of May, beginning of June, 2011. And I was staying somewhere. The second or third night, God spoke to me. He said, go and give so, so, and so this amount of money. And when you do it, I will open unending open doors unto you. I prayed for years. Years. You know, a lot of people think that prayer is something that you will just pray and and you just... There are some things that you pray for and you get the answer there and then. There are some things that you pray for for a long time. He gave me a prayer to pray in 1997. That's 20 years now by April. It will be 20 years in April. So I pray the prayer. Pray, pray, pray. I'm still praying the prayer. Then in December of 2010, that's like 13 or 14 years. He said, you know, he said nobody can get that thing except the Holy Ghost teaches him. It's taking me 14 years to be told that the Holy Ghost has to teach you what to do. Ah, so I said, sir, why didn't you tell me from the very beginning? Then I would have known how to pray the prayer. Holy Ghost, just teach me. Holy Ghost, just teach me. 14 years, I'm praying. He's the one that gave me the prayer point to pray. I tell him, no, I said, ah, this thing that you said I should pray about, I didn't ask for it. If you give it to me, I'll be very grateful. If you give me one over 1,000 of it, I'll be very, very, very grateful. 14 years to be told that the Holy Ghost has to teach you to be able to get that grace. Ah, So I changed my prayer. By this time, I'm getting tired. Then the man of God appeared to me in a vision. He said, God said I should tell you that he's the one that gave you that prayer point. He said, continue to pray the prayer. He said it will speak for itself. 20 years now, I'm still waiting. But along the road, he's telling me things to do. So, in May of June of 2011, he said, go and give so and so X amount of money. And when you do it, 
I will open unending doors unto you. So I said, okay. You are he that gives seed to the planter and bread to the eater. So, then I start to pray for the seed again. May of June 2011 to by this June, that will be six years. So I started to pray the prayer. You are he that gives seed to the planter. You are he that gives to the seed. Then, I've started to carry out the instruction from last year, December. A lot of prayers that people pray, they are just emotive prayers. There is a time to separate yourself and be with God alone. The Bible says, and Jesus will withdraw himself from the multitude and the crowd to be with God. And he will wake up early in the morning, pray. Then after he has prayed, he will come and meet the people. A lot of people are struggling in life. They're going from one place to the other. You know, there's no man that can help you except God helps you. If I pray for you now, I've done my own part. God has to hear and to answer. If he doesn't answer, he will hear because he's not deaf. If he doesn't answer, he prays not and void. So rather than look for God, they are running from pillar to post. It's three days, five days. Leave everything that you are doing and wait for God to speak to you and give you direction. You know? And just be in the presence of God and seek the face of the Lord. I was told to sell somebody, I think sometimes last year. God said to me, He said, uh, Can't you see that there is something wrong with his life? He said, uh, Ask him that has he ever occurred to him before to separate himself unto me so I can tell him what to do. Until you learn to wait on the Lord. Isaiah said, them that wait on the Lord shall receive strength and then they shall receive grace to be lifted up like an eagle. When they run, they will not falter or stagger or get tired or stumble. Though the youth shall be weary or tired, but them that wait on the Lord. The only way to go is to go up. It's better for you to, not to waste your time. Cut yourself off from all the... There's plenty of noise in Lagos. Cut yourself off from the noise. Lock yourself inside one room somewhere. Whether in your house, you go to a prayer ground, camp, whatever it is. And tell God, I won't leave this place until you are spoken to me. Many years ago, I was confronted with a situation in the early 80s. Or early... In the early 90s. And it was like as if heaven just closed. It's between 1993 and 95. So, I went to meet the pastor. The man called Tony Rappo. I said, I don't know what is going on. This, So he prayed for me. And uh, nothing happened. Then I went to go and meet the Ogopatapata of the church. He prayed for me. And nothing happened. Ah. So I asked God, I said, this man prays for people and something happens. Then I said, go back to their camp. Or the camp. Go and wait for me there. So I decided to go. A Friday. I've been told no food. Just liquid, water, or whatever it was. So that Friday, as I'm about to, I'll come to that one later on. As I'm about to prepare to go, something happened. And I got hungry. 
with my ogre. So God told me, he said, go and eat quick now. Go and eat food. Don't waste your time. Go and do what? And he said, don't, <laughs> don't waste your time. Yeah, there's no fast again today. So I just abandoned the fast and everything. I went to get, going to eat food. And then I said, okay, I will start again on Monday. He said, okay, but let your head correct small, small. Yeah. So that Monday, I packed, I packed up my load, everything. Early in the morning, before quarrel can start, I've left the house. I'm living in a cock at that time. Yes, I've left the house early in the morning. I went to camp. No food, no water. Before it was no food. So now that I saw that it, this matter is very serious, that it's so serious that it can cause quarrel, and the enemy does not want you to be free. So I said, okay, I will add no water inside. No food, no water. The first night, God appeared to me. I saw a huge tree. Very, very huge tree. I said, I approach the tree, the tree collapsed. Bam! God said, I've given you victory over them. Three witches. Three generations of witches. Then God showed them to me. And he took me to the roof of a house where they are living. And I saw this uh, red clothes with cowries. He said that's the source of their power. He said, spoil it. I declare and I speak concerning your life this morning. The source of power over your life to trouble you. The source of satanic, demonic, occultic power over your life uh, to hold you captive. The source of demonic, occultic power over your ministry, your business, your finances uh, that has held you bound for so long. Uh, I command it to collapse now in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I destroy it now in Jesus' name. By the second or third night, the head, uh, the oldest of the three of them appeared to me, myself, my father, and my mother, and said to me, Yoruba, only a bami beba by Jesu, only That is, help me to plead with the father of Jesus. He said, This suffering is too much. I declare and I speak over your life. Joel said, uh, He said, Bitter the sickle and every famine implant. He said, turn it to a weapon of warfare. He said, the time to fight is now. Every man, every woman, every power troubling your life, troubling your business, your finances, troubling your marriage. I judge them this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. All those who are afflicting you, <laughs> he said in Isaiah, he said that they will know that I am the God of Israel, the God of Jacob. He said those who oppress you, I will oppress. Those who afflict you, I will afflict. He said even the prayer of the mighty, even the lawful captive shall be delivered. He said to Abraham in Genesis 12, whosoever causes you is cursed. Every man, every woman that has caused you, I curse them this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every man, every... He who said no weapon formed or fashion against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment stands condemned. Every tongue that has risen against you, I condemn this morning. I judge this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. The power of Satan over your life, I break this morning. The power of Satan over your life, your marriage, your ministry, your business, your finances. I break this money in Jesus' name. He said, help me to beg the father of Jesus. He said, this suffering is too much. And I didn't see the person physically. But God will tell me what was happening to the person. And then when I see my mother, I'll ask her, oh, so, so, and so, and so, exactly as God told me. The person was bedridden, all kinds of boys, and as God was telling me, my mother would tell me, all kinds of boys was busting out on the person's body. If you lie like this, boy, dear, dear. You lie like this, boy, dear, dear. You lie. Oluwa fi amwa, tanyisi inirani oruko jesu. 
gbogbo awon to ni yin lara ani gbogbo awon to ni yin lara ibi kibi tun o ba wa ni le baba ni ni le iya ni ni le oko ni ni le aya ni ni bi se ni oluwa ni won lara ni oruko jesu oluwa ni won ra ni oruko jesu oluwa ni won lara ni oruko jesu gbogbo awon to ni yin lara se ki oluwa fi won si inira ni oruko jesu ani gbogbo awon to ni yin lara se ani ki oluwa fi won si inira ni oruko jesu wherever they are all those troubling your life as the lord live it from today every man every woman who say you will not have testimony let them die quickly now in the name of jesus christ all those who have said eh, except they die you will not make it you will be alive you will be hell you will be healthy we are the best we are the intended you will know it you see my father is a warrior Every power of witchcraft, every power of sorcery working against your life, there's a woman here where you are living. Everything that the enemy is using, using to monitor your life, I break it this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I break it this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. I break it this morning. Every evil eye. Every wicked eye. Every evil ears. Follow you about. I judge this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a woman here. There is a woman that has stolen the heart and the affection of your husband. It's at the heart of kings. It's in the hands of the Lord. And he turned it as the causes of water. In whatsoever direction he wants. The power of hell, the power of satanic manipulation over your husband. I break it this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. If that woman does not desist, let her die and die quickly in the name of Jesus Christ. For prayer to work, uh, sir, there are things that you have to do. Jesus said to the people, he said, uh, prayer is not harder or answered because of repetition. Yeah, they call this useless repetition. You know, there's this thing they send about. They send you to text or something. If you send it to 20 people, uh, it's satanic. What did I say? Uh, since you have been sending it, has anything happened? Uh, go and look for God. God is not in SMS or in text or in uh, WhatsApp. He's in his word. Prayer is not harder by reason of what? Vain, rep useless repetition. There are things uh, that make prayer to be hard. The Bible says uh, that Jesus said uh, two men entered into the temple on one day. And one said, uh, 
I paid my tax and my offering. I'm the one that built the church. The shirt that the pastor is wearing and the bow tie, I bought it for him. Let God answer me. He said, the other one said, I'm an adulterer and a fortificator, I'm a sinner. Let God show me mercy. Then Jesus said, who did God answer? He said, the one that came in humility, the one that abased himself. He said, whosoever abased himself eh, shall be lifted up. He said, abase yourself, humble yourself under the mighty hands of God that in due season, he might exalt you. He said the man that came in humility and abasement went home rejoicing because his prayer had been heard. After you have paid your tithes and your offering and you have bought shirt and tie and bought a Mercedes S class for the pastor, go and humble yourself. God uh, give grace to the humble in heart. But that's what? He tells the proud they are going nowhere. If God is resisting you, no general overseer can set you free. He giveth grace. Do you know what grace is? Deuteronomy 18 said, It is I, the Lord, that giveth the grace, power, to get wealth. Grace is enablement. In any area of your life, whether it's wisdom, whether it's knowledge, whether it's counsel, whether it's money, whether it's motto, it's called grace. It is the Lord uh, that giveth the word. Not the pastor or the general overseer. The Lord himself. James 1, 17 says, Every good uh, and every perfect gift uh, cometh from above. The father of lies uh, in whom there is no lie. Promotion uh, does not come uh, from the apostle or the prophet. It does not come from Maduguri or Shotoko or Kalaba. It comes from God in heaven. There is nothing any man can receive except to be given from heaven. If you don't understand the things that make prayer to be hard, you are in trouble. There's a story of a man in the book of Samuel. He had plenty of money. But his name was foolish. That a man has money does not mean that it's not foolish. There are plenty of foolish people who have money. Or you don't know. Uh, a man has to be foolish. For EFCC to find a 90 something or 9 point something million dollars. And he went there to go and say the money belongs to me. Uh -huh. He's a foolish man. Uh, there are so many people they say they have abandoned their account. They have run away. If account officer call, if you call this my number again, I say I'm not the owner of the account. Uh, then the foolish man went to the, he said I'm the owner of the money. Then they locked him up. Uh, Money, prosperity, or financial wealth and riches is not a sign that a man is wise. The Bible says uh, in the book of Ecclesiastes or Proverbs, he said that a foolish man, a poor man, had wisdom, but nobody in the town will listen to him. Uh, nobody in the town will listen to him. So this man called foolish, Nabal, the meaning of his name is foolish. When they born him on the eighth day, his father and his mother looked at him. They said, this boy, everybody call him foolish. Mm. When he was in primary school, foolish. Uh, present, sir. Foolish. Present, auntie. But he still went to go and have money. And the Bible says he had plenty of it. Plenty of it. And David sent people to go and meet him. He said, ah, we saw your shepherds and your sheep and your cow and everything. We didn't take anything of it because we don't take what, belong, what does not belong to us. He sent people. He said, just tell him to give us something so that we can eat. Then they got to where foolish is. <laughs> he laughed. Is it your master's father that bought all this uh, cow and ram and everything for me? He said, many are the servants that are booking away from their master. He said, go and tell him that he's a foolish... Then they told David. <laughs> David said, ah. he said, okay, no problem. You, 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 arm yourself. 
He said, by tomorrow, if anybody that pisseth against the wall is still remaining in the house of neighbor, my father no be in me. Then the wife of foolish, she was not at home that time. She has gone maybe to party. She came back. Then the servants told her. He said, Mama, see what foolish did today. Even his servants were calling him foolish. He said, what did he do? Then they told the, the, the woman, Abigail. Then Abigail gathered uh, gifts. She was a wise woman. Don't marry a foolish woman. And foolishness is not by reason of PhD. There are many foolish people who have PhD. Uh, the Bible says, it is only a fool that says there is no God. Is it inside your Bible? How many professors believe that God exists? Very few. Because they are foolish. Paul said, if going to heaven was by reason of the school that you went to and the degrees. He said, all of us, we not qualify. Who are they? Fishermen and useless, illiterate people. Uh-huh. He said, to the well read, he said, the gospel is too simple. Uh, just come and believe. Believe what? Have you seen God before? Is that not how they reason? The foolish man says there is no God. Mm. Then Abigail gathered every time and went to go and meet David. You need a wife who is an intercessor. Who is a what? Uh, who knows how to pray? One Baba said something last year. They abused him. He said, don't marry a woman who cannot pray. They said, what do you mean by that? Is, it that, why you, is that why you are marrying a woman? I don't know about that, though. I'm telling you the one that I know. Marry somebody who can pray. I didn't say don't marry somebody who cannot pray. I'm saying marry somebody who can what? I didn't say don't marry somebody who cannot pray. But marry a woman who can what? Then she told David, he said, "Ah, ah. you want to shed blood. Don't allow the blood of this foolish man to be on your hand. He's foolish, oh. That, and that's why we call him foolish. And he does not listen to any. I've had men say, The business is my business. The business is what? Yeah. When I hear a man saying such thing, I say, this man not get sense. You not get what? Yes. The business is what? His own. Only him, his wife, his children, that is my own business. So if you tell me that the business is not my business, why should I pray for you now? I'm your wife. What do you know? I don't know anything. But I know how to get on my knees and pray for you. Mind your business. Are you the owner of the business? Ah. You will soon know now that the business is not only your own. David told Abigail, okay, don't worry, I won't do anything. Then Abigail went back home. When she was leaving, she didn't tell Nabal. Then she came back. The Bible says when she got home, Nabal was what? He was doing party. He's drunk. When she came back home that night, Abigail did not do what? He didn't talk to her. He didn't do what? When you get home, you see your husband is mixing gin and tonic. There's a Henny King here. There's Hennessy here. Baba Tomide or Awao, there is talk. Let us talk. You want to talk with a man that is a drinking a, a gin and tonic? You're a fool. A man put gin and tonic in his front and mixing it with Henneke. It, it, that's the time that you want to talk serious matter. We must talk today, today. Oh. <laughs> Baba Tomide, come and sit down. He said, can't this talk? Wait till tomorrow. It's today. It's very urgent. 
Abigail was a wise woman. She came home and saw that the man is drunk. This is not the time to talk. Eh? I went to go and sleep. When the drink has cleared, in there in the morning, she told the man, he said, do you know that you would have died yesterday? What happened? The man died that same day. He had a heart attack. When he heard that he would have died yesterday, the Bible says his heart became like what? Stool. A house divided against itself can never... Husband and wife, they are like this. They are praying. Of who to If two of you shall do what? Sir, that I agree. It's not because you feel like agreeing. Your flesh say, don't this. Don't pray, uh, don't pray with this woman. You woke up in the morning, she gave you lifting tea. That one with a uh, rope. Uh, and, and, and powdered milk. She didn't buy liquid milk or pig. Some people say they can't drink powdered milk. Uh, she knows that you don't like powdered milk. And she went to go and buy tea with rope and put it there. And quarrel has started. And Jesus said, if two of you shall agree as touching Lifting tea is saying to you, don't agree with this woman. You don't feel like agreeing. Your flesh says don't agree. But Jesus said, if two of you shall agree, if you can just humble yourself and bring yourself and agree, then heaven will agree with you. Peter said, live with them. Live with who? Who is the them? Who? Uh -huh. Where do you work? Where are you working? You go. Where are you working? Are you working? Who is working? Eh? You. Where is he working? You have a guy. Can you quarrel with your girl when you have not found another work? Eh? Eh? Whatever your girl says, you don't like it. You just agree. Eh? Live with them with what? With what? With what? Understanding. Eh? He said, let your prayers be hindered. You didn't see that one inside your Bible? Eh? The men have turned that one out. They use a black marker to mark it. Live with them as the weaker vessel with what? Lakai. Do you know what they call Lakai? Yeah. Let your prayer be what? You see the problem that so many men are facing. Why their prayer is not working? It's not devil or devil, devil or witch or anything. No, they are not in agreement with their wives. And Jesus said, by the mouth of Peter, he said the prayer will be what? In that. Let me show you where it is. First Peter 3. Read from verse 1. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that, that if any obey not the word, they also might without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating of the hair and of wearing of gold or putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner, in the whole time, the holy women also who trusted in God had done themselves being in subjection unto their husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, 
whose daughters ye are as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor to the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Finally, be ye of all one mind, having compassion one to another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. Not rending evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrawise blessing, knowing that ye are there unto called, that you should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. For the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Malachi 2. It is in your own interest to humble yourself. Malachi 2, 13 to 17. And this have you done again, covering the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping and with crying out, in so much that he regarded not the offering anymore, or received it with good will at your hand. Yet ye say, Wherefore, because the Lord had been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously, yet she is thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. And did not he make one, yet had he the residue of the spirit. And we are for one, that he might seek a godly seed, therefore take it to your spirit. And let no one deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. For the Lord, the God of Israel, said that he hated putting away. For one covered violence with his garment, said the Lord of hosts. Therefore take it to your spirit, that ye deal not treacherously. Proverbs 5. 15 to 23. Proverbs 5. 15 to 23. Drink waters of, out of thine own cistern and running waters out of thy own well. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad and rivers of water in the streets. Let them be only thine own and not strangers with thee. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant row. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times. And be thou ravished always with her love. And why wilt thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger? For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holding with the cause of his sins. He shall die without instruction, and in all the greatness of his folly, he shall go astray. Maybe you are here this morning. You have been dealing treacherously with your spouse. Whether it's the man that is dealing treacherously with the woman or the woman with the wife. Because in Lagos, all kinds of things happen. All heads bowed. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. He said, 